It's part three of our interview with Graham Goble, original singer-songwriter for the Little River Band. We look at Sleeper Catcher and the song Lady. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. We've had a lot of fun with this series, but we've decided to present to you the three singers, three main singers of the Little River Band in this series. We just talked to B. Bertles last week. Last year, we talked to Glenn Shurek, and of course, recently, Graham Goble. How did Lady come about? Because to me, that's a natural... I wouldn't have picked a reminiscing and I would have been wrong, yeah. but Lady, uh, as from my experience back then, I would have picked yeah. Lady right away. How did that come about? What, what do you mean, the song writing it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, when, um, when I was in Mississippi before Little River Band, uh, we used to play, um, uh, what would, I guess, would you understand pubs and hotels and things where you, where you, I don't know what you've got in Canada, but here we would do a gig Pretty much every day and then on saturday we would do like a, a matinee uh, like a, an afternoon show at a local pub where you'd have probably i don't know four four hundred people drinking eating food and then we, we'd go and do a set before we would go home and then do a set at night so we played at this pub one day uh, at, at a hotel in melbourne and i was and we used to do um you know we were doing long way there and those sorts of things and I saw this most beautiful blonde girl. She was quite tall on the on the uh, dance dancing with another girl with her friend, just in in front of the band. And I was watching her. Um, and then um, we do a couple of sets. And then when we finished, she suddenly wasn't there anymore. And so I thought, wow, she was beautiful, really a beautiful girl. And I I was taken by her. And I just went home and wrote, lady about her that, that's what happened let me start off with the, the medal of order of australia I must say man to man congratulations <laughs> thank you i mean i was blown away really with this i mean but i've been actually blown away with the response to it it's been extraordinary uh, i mean i've heard from people i haven't seen or had connection with for 50 years and i've had people ringing me uh, emailing and everyone <laughs> seems so um so happy about it so I think it's because it's, it's sort of a win for the arts here. There were only, I think, five people from the arts out of 840 medals that were awarded on Australia Day from on various levels. So, yeah, it was, it's been amazing. And I'm hoping that this will, may, maybe it's the time for something important and maybe it will help me with the musical. For, for whatever reason, I mean, I even went to my doctor, who's pretty straight laced, you know what doctors are like, he's an older man. And when I finished my um, consultation, he walked out into the waiting room with all these strangers, wait, his next patients. And he said, this guy's just won an OAM. And I, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm sort of hiding like this. And everyone's <laughs> sort of looking up and whatever. But it's just extraordinary. The For whatever reason, people think you're okay now because you've got a, an OAM or something. I don't know. It, it seems to mean a lot to society whatever you were in your uh in your in your late 20s when lrb started i think you were the second oldest i think Glenn, glenn's older than you yeah, glenn's three years older than me yes yeah so yeah i was uh, 75 but i would have been 28 28 yeah, yeah. yeah. when yeah. when you were starting a band like that that had such legs i mean that's amazing did you know what you were doing you must have known because you had been in other things before a lot of other things oh, that, what was that, the vibe like well Vibe's probably not the. I mean, Glenn, Glenn and I always had a bit of a bit of friction between us because he 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 comes from a whole different um, direction into into music. I I I'm a real sort of rehearsing guy and, and really working stuff out and putting like untold hours into stuff. Glenn doesn't um, respond to that very well. He's more spontaneous in his approach to music, but. Um, I felt like when I was young, I started writing songs, wrote my first song about 11, and then by the time I got into my late teens, like I just felt, well, it's just, I, I, I had almost a knowing that it would just be an international career. I'm just sitting in a, my bedroom in Adelaide, and I thought, well, there's, I had a great inner belief in what I could do. Well, well let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you there. If I would have come up to your parents and said what you just said of going, you know, Graham believes he can make it work right there. 
did, did they get it that you what, what you were doing was going to be successful or you had anything no. back then? No, no my, my, my parents were, were awesome, but th they didn't understand what I had inside of me. And my mother was uh, more concerned with me having a, um, a secure employment. I had a government job when I was working and I stayed there for about nine years until 1972 when I left to go to Melbourne to live. Well, she was very concerned because she said, well, you've got this government job for life. You know, they don't fire anybody. It's yeah. it's wages. And, I'm, and I said, well, look, this is something that I just not only have to do, but I know this is my path, you see. And, and I think it's not, it's more than a gut feel. I, I see there's a difference in knowing something and just having a gut feel that I think this is maybe might work out. But I just knew, and that's all I can say, and it's not an ego thing, it's just, a, it's sort of like when you meet someone, uh, maybe your wife or someone that you, you meet them, and in five minutes you just know, this is the person I want to be with. It doesn't make any sense, but you just know it. So you can't intellectualise those sorts of, or even understand, those sorts of um, feelings that people have. You don't think of so, even questioning it. That, that's, what, that, that's what I used to say. When I met my wife, I didn't even question that it was her. No. So I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, so that's the way I feel about the musical now. Even at my age now, it's an inevitability. That's, I feel exactly the same now about my musical as I felt about my career when I was 16. Uh, now, it doesn't mean to say, therefore, it has to manifest and be as successful or, or even more successful than Little River Band, it doesn't mean that at all. All it means is, I know I've got an idea and a show that is capable of being the biggest show in the world. It's capable of that. Whether it, whether it achieves that is in, it's the grace of God, really, because I believe in the grace of God, how doors open and certain things, a phone call comes or a connection comes. And, and I've observed that all the great things in my life that have manifested have really come out of left field from somewhere just a, this is the way life works all you've got to do is show up stay positive do the work and be ready i'm ready and i wait now if i die before it comes out my son's uh, working with it on me it might be then that that's not it it's, the joy for me is writing the show putting it on the stage working toward that and the result of it as I say, is an act of grace and, and it's in the lap of the gods. So that's just the way I uh, am with everything because it, even when I went professional we, it, with m my music career, we, there were many times with people leaving, I had to replace members and we went to England, we ran out of money, but then three weeks later we meet Glenn Shorrock and then we make new plans. I was never phased when we were sitting after... Uh, touring around with Beeb uh, in Mississippi for three or four years in Adelaide, in Australia, we go to England and in three weeks we've lost all of our money, the band's broken up and what do we do now? It was just a question more like, okay, now what's next? Well, next is, what do we do? Well, then we talk about, let's see, we know Shorrock's in town, Beeb said, let's see if we can contact him. I think that might be a good idea. That was part three of our series on the Little River Band interviews we have done with Glenn Shurick, the lead singer, who's also one of the main songwriters. Speaking of songwriters, also B. Bertles and Graham Goebel. More coming up in about three days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share them on social media. We'd appreciate that. Buy a t-shirt, help support the channel. Links in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.